Okay, let's start with the uh, usual reminder that in plane waves, pressure as a function of position and time is given by the d'Alembert solution f of t minus x over c plus g of t plus x over c. Uh, where this represents a forward propagating wave and this represents a backward propagating wave and where Ft if the sig is the signal carried by that wave and Gt is the signal carried by the uh, other wave. If I take the Fourier transform of that I get the pressure spectrum which is the Fourier transform of Ft times exponential minus i kx plus the spectrum of associated to the signal gt times exponential minus i k uh, x. Now I will usually write that from now on a little bit differently with just using different symbols calling the amplitude of the forward propagating wave p plus and the amplitude of the backward propagating wave p minus. Now, um, another important quantity that we calculate over and over is the velocity in the x direction at position x and pulsation omega, which is simply p plus divided by the uh, characteristic impedance rho c times exponential minus i k x, but pay attention, no longer a plus here, but a minus p minus divide, uh, omega divided by rho c times exponential i kx. And we go from here to there using the all important relationship that velocity in the i direction or let's say in the j direction is equal to i divided by rho omega times the gradient or the derivative of the pressure spectrum in the uh, j direction where i of course is equal to square root of minus one. Now let's consider a wave propagating in the x direction but hitting a rigid wall located at position x equals zero. So we'll always have the same starting point. The general one-dimensional pressure expression is P plus omega, but from now on I will no longer write that omega exponential minus i kx plus P minus exponential i kx. And the velocity in the x direction is equal to p plus over rho c exponential minus i kx, sorry, minus p minus divided by rho c exponential i kx. What condition do we have over p plus and p minus? Well, we know that here the velocity must be zero because if the surface is a rigid surface, the air particles cannot get in and out of, let's say, the wall, and so the local normal velocity must be equal to zero. So we have that Vx zero omega must be zero, which means that P plus over rho C minus P minus over rho C is equal to zero, which means that P plus is equal to P minus. So we have necessarily, if the plane wave P plus comes and hits a wall, the reflected wave, the wave traveling in the other direction, must have strictly the same amplitude. Which means that our pressure field here becomes simply P plus exponential minus I kx plus, plus exponential plus I kx, which means 2p plus cosine kx, from which we get an important result is that the pressure at the wall is equal to twice the 
amplitude of the incident pressure. When the pressure, a pressure wave is emitted, comes, travels towards the wall, hits the wall and is reflected locally at the wall, the pressure is twice the amplitude of the incident pressure because there we have a perfect um, uh, in interaction between the incident wave and the reflected wave. But the uh, velocity field is given by P plus over rho C times exponential minus I kx minus exponential I kx which give us um, 2 to I P plus divided by rho C let me see minus 2 I P plus sine kx and uh, you see that the impedance which is the, the ratio of pressure to velocity is equal to this divided by that so we get rho c uh, i 2i rho c cosine kx over sine kx which is purely imaginary And since we've seen that the active intensity in a sound field is equal to the real part <coughs> of the pressure times the complex conjugate of the velocity <coughs> divided by 2, um, we see that this is the real part of the pressure times P over V equals, equals Z, so P, P star divided by Z star by 2 Z star, which is P square over 2 times the real part of 1 over Z star. And since Z star is purely imaginary, its real part is equal to zero, which means that the active intensity is equal to zero. We have here an important result. The, the incident wave propagates a certain active intensity towards the wall, but the reflected wave um, generates exactly, or well, propagates exactly the same intensity in the other direction, so that the two intensity flux compensate each other and the net active intensity at one point is equal to zero. Now we have another case that we have to study is that of a propagating wave of amplitude P plus that is now reflected by a surface which is perfectly soft and the ideal case of that is that the acoustic pressure is equal to zero. This is not a totally realistic boundary condition, but it's, you know, close to reality. For instance, when you study uh, open-ended ducts, like in musical instruments, you can say that the boundary condition at the open end is roughly that the acoustic pressure is equal to uh, zero. So we're going to have an incident wave and we're going to have a reflected wave and we need to know the amplitude relationship between the two. So we always start by, with the same result. You know, I sometimes use capital letters uh, or lower case letters. It doesn't really matter. Is equal to P plus exponential minus I kx plus p minus exponential i kx but i know that the pressure at x equal to zero must be zero and we see that it is p plus plus p minus and therefore the relationship now is that p plus is equal to p to minus p minus or vice versa so that the pressure in fact is P plus times exponential minus i kx minus exponential i kx which gives me minus 2 i p plus sine kx and the velocity in the x direction 
is p plus over rho c exponential minus i k x minus p minus over rho c exponential i k x which gives me p plus over rho c times exponential minus i k x plus exponential i k x which gives um, 2 p plus over rho c times um, cosine k x and by combining these two results I see that the uh, impedance is equal to uh, minus i rho c sine k x over cosine k x it is purely imaginary and so we have the same results as before that the active intensity in such a standing uh, wave field is equal to zero. Um, we'll now see the most general case where you have an incident wave, a reflected wave, and a wall, but this time the wall is neither perfectly rigid nor perfectly soft. We assume that it is covered by a certain material uh, which is characterized by its normal impedance Zx. So the, U, the starting point is always the same, P is P plus exponential minus I kx plus P minus exponential I kx, so that the pressure at the wall is equal to P plus plus P minus. For the velocity, we have P plus over rho c exponential minus i k x minus P minus over rho c exponential i k x so that the x velocity at the wall is equal to P plus minus P minus divided by rho c. And by putting these two together, we see that the impedance is equal to uh, rho c times p plus plus p minus divided by uh, p plus minus p minus. So if we uh, define the reflection coefficient as the amplitude of the reflected wave over the amplitude of the incident wave, we can rewrite the impedance as rho c times 1 plus r divided by 1 minus r. And this relationship can be easily inverted as you can easily check to see that the reflection coefficient is equal to uh, z minus rho c over z plus rho c. This is an extremely important uh, result which says that which gives the, the ratio of the reflected to incident wave as a function of the uh, normal impedance at the wall and we see three special cases. When the velocity is zero the impedance is infinite and indeed the limit of this for z tending to infinity is equal to 1, which we've seen, p plus is equal to p minus. The other case is when the pressure is equal to 0, where z is equal to 0, and when z is equal to 0, we see that r is equal to minus 1, so that p plus is equal to minus p minus. But we see another very important value, which corresponds to the case where z is equal to rho times c, so the impedance at the wall is equal to the characteristic impedance of the media, where the reflected reflection coefficient is zero, so that p, p minus is equal to zero, whatever p plus. 
This is, of course, a theoretical case. There is no material that has that impedance, but it is logical that, that should we find such a material, there would be no reflection because a, a, a forward propagating wave is characterized by an impedance of rho c, so that if you face it with a material that forces it to adopt the same impedance, it just you know, gets in and disappears with no uh, reflected wave. This is why rho c is such an important uh, value and so that sometimes we are not measuring the impedance by its absolute value but as a relative value z over rho c we talk about reduced impedance.